What are the dangers of using marijuana? Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> Gives it like a rapid uh, heartbeat. Smoker's cough. I'm sure it has some effect on your uh, brain function, memory. It's been science. I guess it's, I get. I'm, I'm being told it's been scientifically proven that marijuana kills your your brain cells. Ah, uh, that's the one I remember. Marijuana kills brain cells. I thought the same thing. You know, I didn't start smoking pot until about five years ago. I thought pot made you stupid. You know, I bought into it just as much as anybody did. I realized when I was like 30 years old that I was tricked. I was like, you got to be fucking kidding me. 1974, the Heath Tulin study. Ronald Reagan announces, the most reliable scientific sources say permanent brain damage is one of the inevitable results of the use of marijuana. Monkeys pumped full of marijuana, apparently 30 joints a day, had begun to atrophy and die after 90 days. Brain damage was determined after counting the dead brain cells of both monkeys who had been subjected to the marijuana and ones who had not. This study became the foundation of the government and other special interest groups claim that marijuana kills brain cells. Here's what they didn't tell you. After six years of requests, how the study was conducted was finally revealed. Instead of administering 30 joints a day for one year, Dr. Heath used a method of pumping 63 Colombian strength joints through a gas mask within five minutes over three months. They suffocated the monkeys. What they did is they put these gas masks basically on their face and they pumped pot into it, but without additional oxygen. So after X amount of time, the brain shut down. Well, if you suffocate, the first thing that's going to happen is your brain cells are going to die with lack of oxygen. So what they did is they suffocated the monkey, showed all these dead brain cells, and then, if, uh, then went on to associate it by saying that cannabis use causes your brain cells to die. And how many people, not knowing the origin of the study, have gone on to COVID and re it. And now people believe it. Studies since have shown no signs of any brain cell damage. In 2005, new research suggested that marijuana could possibly stimulate brain cell growth. That study hasn't received the same attention. Another common belief, marijuana causes lung cancer. In the 1999 study by the Institute of Medicine that was paid for by the United States government, they had to use words like may and uh, should cause cancer. We've been hearing for years them trying to say that it causes lung cancer. Really, that's interesting because you can't even show us one case of cancer being caused by cannabis use alone. Well, you don't know. We haven't been smoking it long enough. Look what uh, happened with cigarettes. We've had about four decades, or more than four decades of experience. If this was going to show up, it should have shown up by now. Finally, a study came out just in the last month verifying that cannabis smoke does not cause cancer. It's different than nicotine. And the elements in the tobacco smoke do cause cancer. And the elements in the marijuana don't. There's no cases of marijuana-only smokers getting brown lung syndrome. There's no cases of marijuana-only smokers getting emphysema. Strange for a plant that's so dangerous. How come none of that? Marijuana is as bad for you or worse than tobacco? Impossible. If they had the evidence, they'd be putting emaciated bodies or emphysema, lung cancer, black lungs. They would be parading them throughout the media. They don't have one. Yet people somehow rather think that it might cause the same thing. No deaths from cannabis use anywhere. You can't find one. In 10,000 years of known use of marijuana, there's never been a single death attributed to marijuana. There's 400,000 deaths in America alone every year that are directly attributed to tobacco. Not one university or medical facility has ever recorded, recorded a single death directly attributed to marijuana. But never mind that. There's other problems, other reasons to fear it. Take addiction, for example. There are more kids in addiction clinics for marijuana than any other substance. This must mean that marijuana is the most addictive substance today. It's undoubtedly true that there are more uh, teenagers and kids in treatment for marijuana than all the other drugs combined. What the DEA never tells you is why that's true. A kid is caught possessing or smoking marijuana. He's taken the court. He's given a choice. Either you, you know, some horrible penalty, or you go to a treatment center. Obviously chooses to go to treatment, and he goes to treatment there, he's considered an addict. But then the DEA gets the point of that stat and say, look at all these kids in treatment for marijuana. God, it must be because today's marijuana is not the marijuana that your parents were smoking. Marijuana is dangerous. There's higher THC levels than ever before. 
Any time you got a bag of Colombian dope 20 years ago, it was way better than the Mexican swag that you normally got. So there's always been a range of THC in plants, and the fact that we can now grow stuff that's the equivalent of what Colombian was 20 years, well, it doesn't mean that we're boosting THC to unheard of levels. It just means, you know, hi, there are some nuances in this discussion that people should be aware of. And I actually think that it's a, a real stroke of our own ego to think that for the 50 or so years of prohibition that we've improved upon varieties that have been cultivated for drug use in places like India and such for thousands of years. People say, well, you can abuse marijuana. Well, shit, you can abuse cheeseburgers, too. You know, you don't go around closing Burger King because you can abuse something. I can take a fucking fork and jam it in my eyeballs. Does that mean forks should be illegal? This narcotic, unlike the opiates, the synthetics, and cocaine, is non-addictive. What do you mean by non-addictive? By non-addictive, it is meant that the user of marijuana, when deprived of the drug, will not experience the agonies of withdrawal. It is habitual, but its use can be discontinued. Then what is its danger? On a daily basis, for uh, a year or so, um, and you stop using it, you're going to notice some differences. But nothing like the kind of withdrawal people will experience in withdrawing from either tobacco or heroin. Is marijuana a gateway drug? Yes, I think it is. If you have I don't exactly know why, but I know it is. It opens a doorway to other drugs. It makes you want to experience more. It makes you feel In the days of Harry Ansling, it was called uh, the stepping stone hypothesis. If you stepped on this stone, marijuana, you were bound and determined to go on to the next stone, which would be one of the so-called hard drugs. Every time it's been studied and looked at and so on, they have never, ever found that there's certainly nothing in marijuana that makes you want to go to anything else. If I use marijuana, why does that automatically make me a candidate to black tar heroin? It's a nonsensical argument. In fact, only one out of every 104 marijuana users use cocaine, and less than one use heroin. The black market throws the, the dealers of soft drugs together with the dealer of hard drugs. So if you have a black market, and you have a dealer that's dealing in marijuana and LSD and everything else, and the dealer might say to you, hey, you want to try something stronger? Well, in that sense, because of the black market, because of prohibition, people may be more susceptible to seeing these other drugs and being willing to try these other drugs. And so what you see is that there is a gateway effect, uh, but it's a gateway effect caused by prohibition and the blending of the hard and soft drug markets.